Nuzlocke, a way to challenge yourself, to push your skills to the limits, to make you think more strategically, and to make you mourn over the death of a fictional character. What did I say, Brayden? What did I say? What was once considered a challenge exclusive for Pokemon fans has since been used in other games, from Smash Brothers to Minecraft and even Mario Kart. Hell, someone even attempted a Nuzlocke in Animal Crossing. How the f does that work? But never once have I seen it done for the Project Diva series. And then they hit me like a light bulb truck. What if I did the very first Nuzlocke of this beloved rhythm game and streamed it live on Twitch? So I began the brainstorm to construct the challenge, and thus, a crazy new way to play was born. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, but Blake, how can you create a Nuzlocke challenge based on a rhythm game? Wouldn't that be a waste of the name? Oh, good question, you smart individual that's probably like smarter than I am, I don't really know. And to that I say, no. You see, there's more than one character to play as in the Project Diva series. There's an insane 10. That means this health bar here actually means something. You fail to pass a song, if you have health left, that's all that matters. A character dies of vocal constraints during performance, it's a sad moment, but hey, you've got plenty more to help you endure the challenge. And you know what else you need in rhythm games? Knowledge and skill. Sure, there may be no strategy like in Pokemon, unless picking a song at a low difficulty every once in a while counts as strategy, but memorizing a chart and tackling higher difficulty songs is key. If you know a chart well, then your survival odds are sky high. But if you don't have a clue on how the chart plays, then you can kiss your Vocaloid goodbyes and get sucked into a black hole of chaos. And with these elements, Project Eva isn't just a rhythm game for Nuzlocke, it's THE rhythm game for Nuzlocke. And I'm ready to prove to the world that Miku and her friends can tackle this deadly challenge. Oh yeah, the rules! I'm not gonna explain it all since most of you know what a Nuzlocke is, so feel free to pause this and read at your own pace. Oh, and one last thing, I won't be discussing everything that happens, just the key parts. If I did talk about everything, I'd just be saying I mashed the buttons to the music over and over, and that would be just as dull as repetitive as a 19 minute rant video about how this game sucks. Wait, 19? Does this guy need a hug? Or therapy? So my Nuzlocke journey began in late May, before Mig Mix Plus came out unexpectedly and before I hit 10k. By the way, y'all are amazing for helping me out with this, you guys are the best. <clears throat> Anyways. So yeah, this challenge was done on the Switch version. And yes, this took me months to put the script together, because I've been sitting and thinking for months on how the f*** to make this sound interesting. It's like trying to describe dry paint philosophically. It's doable, but way more work than Pokemon. The first runner-up on the first ever Project Diva Nuzlocke was Nehru, arguably one of the least popular Vocaloids in Project Diva, or as I like to call her, Bootleg Miku. Originally, she was selected just to demonstrate how a Nuzlocke in Project Diva would even be possible, which meant at some point, she would purposely be sacrificed to the Nuzlocke Grim Reaper. However, that wouldn't be a short task, because Nehru doesn't believe in being a death fighter. In a way, it kind of reminds me of my first ever Nuzlocke. I had a Pokemon I thought wasn't going to do well, and it pushed itself to be even better than I had anticipated. Nehru was the zigzagoon of this run. I eventually grew fond of her long-running endeavors, but when you begin to feel attached to someone in a Nuzlocke, they eventually fall. No! Wait! No, I just... I thought I was pushing it square on the thumb and then X on the... Lesson learned, never get attached to any character in a Nuzlocke. Never was our first, but she was our longest running survivor. She ran so the rest could hopefully walk victorious. Let this be a lesson to everyone. Never discredit those who look weak. You may not know it now, but they may be the strongest and most dedicated members of the team. With a broken heart, we moved on to selecting our second soldier to fight this battle. Now, I should have mentioned this earlier, but my chat picked each Vocaloid minus Nehru, and I can fully trust them to save the best for last. There is absolutely 100% no way of a chance they let me da- Wait. They chose Tano next?! Possibly the most popular with the extra characters in the game? It doesn't make sense! What does she do to them to deserve this punishment? To her credit though, she pulled through pretty well. Obviously not as well as Nehru, but she's only number two on the survival list, so nothing too major. This 30 year old disguised as a teen was sending her eyes on survival for all. Nothing could stop her. Unless I had some sh** luck and random. How about that? Oh boy. Well, maybe I did well enough for her to live? It, it ended in failure. Death. Great. Wow. Amazing. Why do I have a feeling it's gonna go south from here? With eight vocal plates left, we were in a decently comfortable position. 
Two deaths isn't bad, but at least they weren't early. But I'm scared to find out who's next on stage. Uh, so I think we're all in agreement of Kaito then, since uh, no one else has uh, spoken up. So Kaito's next on the table, I guess? Well, I mean... At least the chat learned something. Now look, I have nothing against Kaito. Other than him being hard as to tune properly, they just wanted to see Vocaloid Marth fight to the death. And it doesn't help it at all that the first song I chose made him sound like a certain green muppet that I know will trigger some more if I said his name right now, so I won't. Bye, ho! Wait, no! <laughs> Take a wild guess how this ends up. Ah, no! Ah, I thought I had it! Ah! I would have been actually impressed if Kaito barely lived a 9 star. If you guys very bad, you're 100% on the money. Seven were left, but at this point, the chat was like a ghost town. Barely anyone was there, and the ones who were there were silent as the town itself. Mainly because I streamed this at night. But I saw this quiet moment as the perfect opportunity to select someone who should have been the second runner-up. Sakine Mako. She survived a song that we almost passed, met a terrible fate with random, and died seconds later. Yep. I swear this game hates me sometimes. Six book led remain, and Mako was the next one up. Yeah, there are two different Makos in this game, in case you didn't know. Luckily, she lasted much longer than her Sarkane counterpart, making it through one selected song, one random song that was surprisingly generous for once, and left another song that I lovingly handpicked my set. Yeah, just forget I was gonna finish that sentence. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this it happened right before the triple notes, which probably would've killed her anyways. A little over three hours in, and we lost half our team. Most of them too quickly. We still have five, but it started to feel like the end would be closer than I'd like to hope. With the random songs destroying me most of the time, it would've been only a matter of time before it all fell apart. That was until Len stepped in. As the last man standing, and with four after him, he had a lot to carry on his shoulder. But he marched on like it was nothing. He endured the random shenanigans with no signs of scratches. Snowman, Mr. Earthling, Pinky Swear, and what do you mean was a cakewalk for this 14 year old. And Break It Break It would be the same. But then a raid happened. Wait, who's raiding? Who's raiding? Who's raiding? Wait, wait, no! <laughs> Lin was suddenly crushed in an instant. But luckily the raiders and their leader were kind enough to give him a second chance at life. Something that's never happened to the other five. With that second chance, he proved his worth yet again. Until... Wait! I was celebrating a bit too early, I was like, yup, he did it. Ended up dying anyways. <clears throat> uh, so Barry, if you happen to be watching this, thank you for reviving Lin, but I'm so sorry he barely lasted. Four remained, and we were back to square one. Unsure of who would be next, my only hope was that it wasn't any of these three. Luckily, that was the case. And the next one was... Rin. Listen, I don't mind saving her until Len was out, but at the same time, that could have been Teto there instead. Despite my secret disagreement, Ren unfortunately was up next. And she kind of had some good luck with two of the songs. They were pretty easy, and I was able to walk away happy. But then a 10-star happened, which meant... Yep. I'm actually surprised? Okay, that's my first time attempting that. It's sad that Ren died, but that's the highest I got out of any 10 stars with 37%. That is some great progress for me. And then there were three. The Holy Trilogy. Our only hope was that these three can tackle the remaining 200 and... Man, they have a long way to go. The next runner up was the icon herself, Hatsune Miku. You know, I feel pretty proud of my chat for saving her for the final, very long stretch. Yeah, it would've been cool to have her be the second to last, but no complaints from me with her in third. And since she's basically not only the icon of the Project Diva series, but also one of the most recognized digital singers, she's going to survive with no problem. That's something I would've loved to say, except I forgot to mention one very important detail. I mentioned that the chat had control over who was on the verdict of pushing on daisies, but there was also a channel point reward that I used in the run. Basically, someone can request a song, and I have to play it the moment I see it. I think you unfortunately know where this is going. T-Bone, I swear if you- T-Bone, you sick mother The chat wanted Miku dead. They knew 9 stars were one of my weaknesses. They knew I'd struggle. So many questions ran through my head as I was in the moment of keeping her alive, but eventually failed. Why this song? 
Why Miku? Why do they all want to see her fall? Did they want revenge for the ones that fell too quick? Or were they so familiar with the fast deaths that they quenched for more blood? How did I not see their schemes with Tedo right after Neru? With Rin way after Tedo? Was this their evil plan all along? Was it only for this moment? Or would it spread beyond this Nuzla? You've gotta be kidding me. Two remained, and the chat that killed the star so fast couldn't decide between Haku and Luka. It was time for me to bust out the coin and pray that Luka was safe. Hold on. Oh, don't hit the television! Okay, it's Tails. There was light! My girl was alive! Haku had a lot to make up for and it seemed like she was going to do it, having passed Melt with flying colors and melted worries. I decided to do something very greedy and take her into a 9-star that I only got halfway on. Yeah, I have no one but myself to blame for that. I guess when the people wanted to see uh, who would die first, it's Haku now, Haku now, Haku, Haku, Haku now. And then there was one. The best I saved for last. The pride and joy, and the one that I'm confident will get us through the end. Luca was our last hope. There was a lot of pressure on her, but I'm sure she'd be fine. I decided, since she was the last one alive, I'd make sure I played mostly songs that I knew I could pass. But despite my best efforts, Karma comes back in full circle, and I got greedy once again. This time, on one of her most popular songs. Really? Really? No, I did not want to end it up like that! <laughs> and just like that, the run was over. What was a strong and promising start turned into fast and seemingly non-stop deaths. One after another, they fell too quick, and those who lasted only did for one or two songs longer than the rest. But while the run was short-lived, it was one of the most fun I've ever had with Project Eva, only behind modding Megamix Plus. It was a nice challenge and a change pace from the normal gameplay, and it definitely made the health bar actually mean something for once. I hope more people attempt to Nuzlocke their next Project Eva playthrough because it really shakes up how you think of and play the game, even only for a slight moment. I know I'll be doing it again in the future, and with the mods and Mega Mix Plus, it could be bigger and better. Now if you excuse me, I'm gonna grab some popcorn and wait for this video to be in another pointless hate rant video. Oh, you know it's gonna happen eventually.